it's our stories. Yeah. Hello, this is Henry Klein again with another YouTube video. This time, um, you know, in my last video, we talked about my author side of the world and how I kind of came to be an author and what inspired me or what uh, pushed me to become one. And uh, today we're actually just going to look at the musician side of my life, uh, which is, um, you know, nothing crazy, but this is kind of just going to be a fun series. Um, I really love gear review channels. Like I watch them all the time of people reviewing, you know, guitar gear and new pedals, new amps, whatever. And um, I kind of wanted to do that myself. Like I wanted to start, you know, reviewing a bunch of equipment and whatever, but that was going to require me buying like the latest and greatest equipment, demoing it, and then maybe trying to sell it, maybe trying to keep it, whatever. So I was talking it over with my fiance, Candace, and she was like, hey, how about you just do like reviews of stuff you already have? And then that kind of made me think, well, why don't I just kind of pay homage or, you know, whatever, or just give the backstory of certain guitars and, and equipment that I have. So with guitar stories, we're obviously going to talk about guitars. So to give a little backstory, when I was seven years old, my dad kind of like, he randomly came home with, as dads do, no, I'm just kidding. But he came home with like a drum kit, an electric guitar, and an electric bass. And he just gave them to uh, me and my brothers, and he was like, learn the instruments, you know. So I think at the time, I, I love telling this story, but um, I was, like I said, around seven or eight, maybe. And my dad wanted me to be the drummer, so, um, but, you know, I hadn't seen any, like, live band footage, really, or, you know, seen any live music or anything, so I didn't even know how to play drums, like, at all, and we set up the drum set, but the kick pedal was actually broken, like, what you would use to, you know, hit the bass drum, and I didn't understand that. Like, I didn't even know that that was broken or whatever. So, um, yeah. But, um, so what I like to tell people is that when I was trying to drum, I would lean back and hit the bass drum with the stick because I was like, how do you, how do you hit, you know, how is the bass drum supposed to be used? So, you know, I wasn't really destined to become a drummer, but, um, yeah, so then, like, shortly after that, I, I saw this guitar, which my dad brought home, um, and I tried learning it when I was seven. I think my cousin taught me, like, Mary Had a Little Lamb, but this wouldn't stay in tune. It was really bad, uh, you know, it was very bad out of the box, like, no adjustments or anything were made on it. And it kept the same strings on it till I was about 12 years old, and then I really wanted to start learning guitar. So this was the guitar that I really started learning on. Um, this is a Fender Bullet Strat with a hardtail bridge, which I think was actually more of a benefit than a loss. Uh, you know, a lot of people, when they get guitars, or especially like Squire, or not Squire, but Stratocaster style guitars, they usually have a whammy bar. And uh, to me, personal opinion, who cares? But um, to me, like that can be distracting, you know, because you're supposed to be learning how to just play, you know, your chords and whatever. And then you just want to like do all this fun stuff on the whammy bar. So, I mean, I'm actually kind of thankful in retrospect, like, that this didn't have, uh, you know, a, a trem bar. It also, you know, so then it doesn't even have the routing to where you uh, string the strings through the back of it or anything. It's just a hardtail bridge, and you string it just right here, which, you know, uh, you could say that that hurts the stability and, and whatnot, which you would be right. But, um... Anyway, I like to call this guitar Rick because uh, my dad got it for me. And, or well, not for me specifically, but I ended up with it. 
And he was real happy that I wanted to learn to play guitar. My mom was real happy I wanted to learn to play guitar, so that all worked out. Now, I will go ahead and say this is not the original neck of, uh, of the Bullet Strat. It actually came with, you know, like a rosewood neck and whatever. And if you're into guitar stuff and you want to laugh at me, um, here we go. If you weren't already laughing at me about the bass drum thing. But um, I broke the truss rod on the first neck. So if you don't know what a truss rod is, it's a little, it's up here, and you basically just put an Allen key in it, and you know, you turn it one way, it bows the neck, you know, either back or forth, whatever, whatever you need. And um, I actually broke the truss rod on it. And when I tell people that, they're just like, there's no way you broke the truss rod on a guitar. But you know, it's, a bullet strat I think is about $125 or you know I don't know how much it was in you know early 2000s but probably around that much still or maybe 99 99 but um yeah so I I didn't really know what I was doing and I just put it an allen wrench down I just turned and it just like made a cracking sound and it's just super loose and I actually have the neck somewhere in the closet over here but um, yeah, so this is not the original neck, and it's actually, a lot of it's not original anymore. Um, you know, the body, I love this color. Uh, this is like a weird deep blue, like, I don't know. I think Fender should actually make a guitar in this color now, but they don't. Um, but yeah, so this neck is replaced. It was replaced by, I think I bought this on eBay for like 200 bucks. I didn't really know what I was doing. It's done me pretty well, but um, in the playing at or uh, portion of this video, um, the 10th fret on this guitar is like, it's just shot. Like it doesn't work. I've had a bajillion people adjust it and try to fix it. And no matter what, there's just dead notes there. Um, a bit of overkill, but all the electronics were replaced, um, you know, the pots for the volume and tones. Then I have a Seymour Duncan JB, the single coil version. Um, this middle pickup, I believe, is just like a generic Fender Player Series Strat middle pickup. Or it might not, I don't even think it's from the Player Series, I think it was before the Player Series was made. And it's just from a made in Mexico Stratocaster. And then neck pickup is a Hot Rails. So yeah, I got to play the Squire Strat for about two years from when I was 12 to 14. It's my only guitar. Um, I never touched the bass, sorry. But um, yeah, so I played guitar um, for like two years straight. I had a teacher named Mike Sadowake for about three months. Great teacher, but unfortunately the store closed. Uh, so he didn't, I don't think he was going to do lessons anymore. So he taught me for about two or three months. And, you know, he still plays locally uh, here in Oklahoma. So always great to see him. Great musician. Everybody I'm about to mention, I'm probably going to just say great musician, and I don't mean to be um, repetitive with it, but oh well. Um, so yeah, Mike Sadowake, you know, taught me for about two or three months. Then I went to Dancing Dragon Music, which is no longer here. Um, and Will Galbraith taught me basically the majority of everything I know now. Um, I did lessons with him for a while, and then we kind of like were off and on for a while, you know, every time I kind of got in a musical rut, I would meet up with him again, and he was more than happy to help me out. So thank you, Will. Thank you, Mike. Um, but yeah, when I moved from uh, Granny's Music Mall, which is the store that closed, to Dancing Dragons, you know, and then I started reaching my 14th birthday, I just started thinking about getting a new guitar because, you know, um, I hadn't broken the neck yet on the Squire Strat, but, you know, I just kind of thought maybe I should get something newer, better, you know, more expensive, whatever. And 
I believe I'm telling the story correctly, but I believe that I mentioned it to Cleve Warren, an uh, amazing drummer here in Oklahoma. Uh, he was working there at the time, and I said to him, like, I'm interested in a new guitar. And I believe that he just immediately brought me to this and said, well, you should try this out. So this is an uh, ESP LTD EC256. Um, this is like the beginner version of an EC1000, which a lot of people love those. I haven't tried one yet. Um, I'm sure it would be a pretty substantial upgrade. But I think what's so great about this guitar and, and why I've always kind of gone back to it First of all, my parents got it for me for my 14th birthday, so it's very special to me in that regard. Um, and it's a great mod platform. Uh, you know, I didn't know what I was doing, so I just uh, had a lot of technicians look at it over time. But um, I, you know, yet again, you know, this was, uh, the Squire Strat was modded over time, you know, just as I started learning about that. This... Um, I didn't modify everything on it right away, um, but it's, it's right where I want it. So I don't, I don't feel the need to do any more modifications to it. I haven't modified anything on it in about five years, but I think the first thing I modified was I changed out the pickup. So these are the, uh, Seymour Duncan slash set that's based off of his tones on like, welcome to the jungle and, um, you know other Guns N' Roses songs. Um, but yeah, so it's a classic 59, I believe, or a custom 59, one of the two. And then an Alnico 2 on the neck pickup. So really great tones. And, and I believe the electronics at some point might have been replaced. I'm not 100% sure on that. I think they were. Um, I replaced the bridge here with a very minimal upgrade, you know, from the one that I had to this. Uh, the original bridge was just really corroding super fast. So I changed it out to this one about, uh, I'd say six or seven years ago, and I don't see anything wrong with it, really. I mean, it looks pretty good. Um, I liked the finish on the guitar, you know, it, I wasn't familiar with the process of relicking or anything like that, but I kind of liked how it had like a little bit of, you know, of the paint scratched out, you know, or whatever, make it look like it was used, I guess. And I always just kind of thought of like a bumblebee because it has this, you know, yellow fake binding or whatever and black. And uh, also replaced the nut at some point. And I replaced the tuning knobs for locking tuners just for ease of uh, you know, changing strings and everything. So, um, the reason this guitar is special, I will say, is because, um, I pretty much wrote all of my first album, Resilience. Almost all of those riffs were written on this guitar. Um, if not, you know, maybe the early ideas were done on the Squire, but most of my songs from Resilience, um, were all written on this guitar. A few of my singles I wrote on this guitar, and then with Connections, I wrote like the first two or three songs on this guitar, and then I kind of, you know, was using other guitars and, and branching out and whatnot. But yeah, so um, I just wanted to do this double feature. I don't know if you got anything from this video, but um, I also did want to shout out the Squire Strat was purchased, I believe, from CBR Music in Yukon on Main Street. It's still there. Um, I haven't been in there in a few years, but uh, the people that work there have always been really nice to me, so I just wanted to shout that place out. Um, but yeah, so I guess without further ado, I'll just do a little bit of noodling on both guitars, um, just real quick, and that'll be it. So... Thanks for watching. Um, if you don't want to watch the noodling part, I understand. But here we go.